translated into English by Kosho Yamamoto. 1973 from Dermakshima's Chinese version. Chapter 27, Bodhisattva Haile. Virtuous King, A. Then the Buddha said to Bodhisattva Mahasattva. All shining highly virtuous King, O good man. Any Bodhisattva Mahasattva who practices this great Nirvana Sutra will gain ten virtues. He is not on the same level as the Sravaka or Pratyeka Buddha. This is beyond knowing. Any person who hears this will be surprised. It is neither in nor out, neither difficult nor easy. It is neither outer expression nor non-expression. It is neither secular nor has it any form to represent it. It is not what one comes across in the world. What are the ten? The first contains five. What are the five? 1. One who has not heard this can hear it well, 2. Having heard it, there is benefit, 3. It well cuts away doubt, 4. The mind of wisdom is straight and has no bends, 5. One knows the closely guarded store of the Tathagata. These are the five. How do we hear what we have not heard? This refers to the depths of the closely guarded doctrine. All beings have the Buddha nature. There is no discrimination between Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The nature and characteristics of the three treasures are the eternal, bliss, self, and the pure. All Buddhas do not, to the very end, enter nirvana and are eternal and unchanging. The nirvana of the Tathagata is, not is and not is not, not that which is created and not that which is not created. Not something leakable defiled and not something unleakable undefiled, not matter and not non-matter, not name and not non-name, not phenomenal and not non-phenomenal, not is and not not is, not substance and not non-substance, not cause and not result, not opposite and not non-opposite, not brightness and not darkness, not appearing and not non-appearing, not eternal and not non-eternal, not disruption and not non-disruption, no beginning and no non-beginning, no past, no future, and no present, no skanda and no non-skanda, no sense-sphere, and no non-sphere, no sense-realm and no non-realm, no links of interdependence and no non-twelve links of interdependence. All such categorical items are of a nature deep and fine in implication. One can hear what one has not heard before. Also, there are yet things which do not reach one's ear, which are all the sutras of the Tirthaikas, i.e. the four Vedas, the Vyakaranas, the sutras of the Vasazikas and Kapalas, the works referring to charms, medical arts, handicrafts, the eclipses of sun and moon, the changes in the cycles of the constellations, books, and prophecies. In none of these do we hear anything of what is secret. Now, we come to see this in the sutra. Also, there are the eleven types of sutra from which the Vapilya is excluded. And we see no deep and secret things stated there. But such we come to know from the sutra. O oh good man! That is why we say that we hear what we have not heard before. We say that we gain benefit when we hear. If we listen to this great Nirvana Sutra, we come to know all about the depths of what is said in all the Vapilya Mahayana Sutras. For example, this is like a mirror, in which a man or woman can clearly see color and form. It is the same with the great Nirvana Sutra. The Bodhisattva takes this up and clearly sees through all the depths of things stated in the Mahayana Sutras. Also, this is like one with a great torch, who is able to see all in a dark room. It is the same with the torch of the Nirvana Sutra. The Bodhisattva takes this up and gains the depths of what is said in the Mahayana Sutras. Also, it is like the sun. When it appears, thousands of lights shine over the mountains and gloomy places, and man can clearly see what is far off and distant. It is the same with the pure light of wisdom of this great Nirvana. It shines upon all the depths of Mahayana, enabling those of the two vehicles to see the Buddhist teaching. How? because one hears the all-wonderful doctrine of this great Nirvana Sutra. O oh good man! If the Bodhisattva Mahasattva listens to this great Nirvana Sutra, he will come to know all about the names and letters of all things. If he writes, 
copies, recites, and explains it extensively to others, and thinks about the meaning, he will know all the significations of all things. O oh good man! One who hears knows only the name, but not what it signifies. If one truly writes, copies, holds, recites and explains it widely to others, and thinks of the meaning, then one can well know the signification. Also, next, O oh good man! One who hears this sutra hears that there is the Buddha nature, but he cannot easily see it. But if one indeed writes, copies, recites, explains it widely to others and thinks carefully about the meaning, such a one can well see it. A person who listens to the sutra hears about Dana, but does not yet see Dana Paramitha. If one indeed writes, copies, recites, explains it widely to others and thinks of the meaning, such a person will well see Dana Paramitha. The same applies to Prajna Paramitha. Oh good man! If the Bodhisattva listens well to this great Nirvana Sutra, he will come to know of Dharma and its meaning, he will become perfect in the two unhindered Nessus and will not be afraid of any Sramanas, Brahmins, Devas, Maras, Brahma, or any of the world. He will expound the types of Sutra. There is nothing that differs. Not following and listening to others, he indeed knows and approaches unsurpassed enlightenment. Oh good man! That is why we say that we listen and arrive at benefit. We say that a person cuts away doubt. Of doubt there are two kinds. One is doubting the name, and the other is doubting the meaning. A person who listens to the sutra does away with the mind that doubts the name, a person who thinks of the meaning cuts away the mind that doubts the meaning. Also, next, O oh good man. Of doubt, there are five kinds. One is doubting and wondering whether the Buddha truly enters nirvana or not. The second is doubting whether the Buddha is eternal or not. The third is doubting and wondering whether the Buddha is true bliss or not. The fourth is doubting whether the Buddha is truly pure or not. The fifth is doubting and wondering whether the Buddha is the true self or not. When one listens to the sutra, one eternally segregates oneself from these four doubts. Also, next, there are three kinds of doubt. First, one doubts whether there is the sravaka or not. Secondly, one doubts whether there is the Pratyeka Buddha or not. Thirdly, one doubts whether there is the Buddha vehicle or not. Any person who listens to the sutra eternally excises his self from these three doubts, and no doubt remains. If one writes, copies, recites, and explains it widely to others, and thinks of the meaning, one comes to realize that all beings possess the Buddha nature. Also, next, O oh good man! Any person who does not hear this great Nirvana Sutra will have much doubt regarding, eternal or non-eternal, bliss or non-bliss, pure or non-pure, self or non-self, life or non-life, being or non-being, ultimate or non-ultimate, the other world or the past world, is or nothingness. Suffering or non-suffering, cause of suffering or non cause of suffering, way or non-way, extinction or non-extinction, dharma or non-dharma, good or non-good, or void or non-void. Any person who hears the sutra will eternally make away with such doubts. Also, next, O oh good man. Any person who does not hear such a sutra will have various doubts, such as, if matter is the self, if feeling, perception, volition, or consciousness is the self, if the eye indeed sees, if the self indeed sees, down to if consciousness indeed knows, if the self indeed knows, if matter indeed suffers from karmic results, down to if consciousness suffers from karmic results. If the self suffers from karmic results. If matter goes to the other world. If the self goes to the other world. Down to if consciousness goes to the other world. And such as if the law of birth and death has beginning and end. If it has no beginning and end. Any person who hears the sutra will eternally do away with these kinds of doubt. Or there may be a person who might entertain doubt as to whether the Akantika those who have committed the four grave offenses, those who have enacted the five deadly sins, 
and those who have slandered Dharma have the Buddha nature or not. Any person who hears the Sutra eternally does away with all such doubts. Or a person may doubt and wonder if there is a limit to the world or not. Or if there are the ten directions or not. Any person who hears the Sutra will eternally do away with any such doubts. This is why we say that it indeed eternally does away with the doubting mind. We say that the mind of wisdom is straight and without bends. If the mind doubts, what is seen cannot be straight. If all beings do not hear. This all wonderful great Nirvana Sutra, what is seen becomes twisted. This applies down to Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas, whose views must also be twisted. Why do we say that what all beings see is twisted? They see the eternal, bliss, self, and the pure in what is leakable, and impermanence, suffering, impurity, and the non-self in the Tathagata, and they think that beings have life, and knowing, and seeing. They construe Nirvana as thoughtlessness non-thoughtlessness, and construe Isvara as having the Noble Eightfold Path. What there is there is the is and the not, is, and all such twisted views. If the Bodhisattva hears this great Nirvana Sutra and practices the Noble Path, he can make away with all such twisted views. What are the twisted views of the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas? These are thinking that the Bodhisattva descends from Tushita heaven, that he rides on a white elephant, that he finds himself in the womb of a mother, that the father's name was Sadodana, and the mother's Maya, that for ten full months he was at Kapalavastu, and was born, that when born and not yet touching the earth Sakrodavendra takes him up, and the Naga kings, Nanda and Upananda, shoot out water and bathe him, that the great demon, Manabhadra, holds a gem parasol and stands behind him, that the earth god holds flowers on which the child places his feet, that he takes seven steps in the four directions, and is satisfied, that as he goes to the temple of the devas, the devas come out and welcome him, that Asita picks him up and prophesies, that having seen the signs he is all sorrow and says, woe that I will not be blessed. With witnessing the rise of the Buddhist teaching, that he goes to a teacher where he learns writing, reckoning, archery, reading omens, and handicrafts, that living in the royal harem he plays with the sixty thousand maids and enjoys himself, that he comes out of the castle and finds himself in the Kapala garden, that on the way he sees an aged man and also a Sramana going along the roadside, garbed in a priestly robe, that he returns to the royal palace, where he sees the bodies of the females of the palace looking like white bones, that all the palatial building were now no more to him than graves, that he despises these and renounces home, that at night he slips out of the castle, that he sees such great rishis as Yudrakara Maputra and Aradhakalama and hears from them about consciousness boundlessness and thoughtlessness non-thoughtlessness. Having heard and meditated upon these, he sees that all things are non-eternal, suffering, non-pure, and non-self. He abandons these, practices penance under a tree and, after six years, sees that penance does not bring him unsurpassed enlightenment. Then he bathes himself in the waters of river Hiranyavati. Near Anjuna and takes some milk cooked porridge from the hands of a pasture woman. After taking this, he goes to the Bodhi tree, where, crushing Marapapiyas, he attains unsurpassed enlightenment, then at Varanasi he turns the will of Dharma and sees that, here at Kusinagara, he enters Nirvana. All such are the twisted views of Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas. O oh good man! The Bodhisattva Mahasattva, when he hears and understands the great Nirvana Sutra, immediately cuts away all such views. And as he writes, copies, recites, understands, explains to others and thinks about the meaning, he becomes straight-minded and makes away with twisted views. O oh good man! As the Bodhisattva Mahasattva practices the way of this great Nirvana Sutra, he comes to see clearly that the Bodhisattva had never for innumerable kalpas descended from Tushita heaven into a motherly womb and entered Nirvana at Kusinagara. This is the right view of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. We say that we well gain the deep meaning of the Tathagata. This is none other than Pari Nirvana. All beings possess the Buddha. Nature 
they repent of the four grave offenses, make away with the mind which slanders dharma, put an end to the five deadly sins, and do away with the akantika within themselves. Then they can attain unsurpassed enlightenment. This is what is meant by the extremely deep and closely guarded thought. Also, next, O oh good man. What do we mean by the extremely deep meaning? Beings know that there is no such thing as self. Even so, they cannot make away with the karma fire of the days to come. Though they know that the five skandhas die out here, the karma of good and evil does not die out. Though there are all the actions of karma, there are now no doers. Though there are places to go, there is none who goes there. Though there is binding, there is no one who is bound. Though there is nirvana, there is no one who has to die out. That is what is meant by the deepness of meaning. Then Bodhisattva all shining highly virtuous king said to the Buddha, O world honored one! It is difficult for me to arrive at the meaning of what the Buddha says regarding hearing and non-hearing. Why? Because if Dharma is is, what there must be there must be is, if it is not is, what there must be there is is not. Nothing can come from nothing, what is cannot die out. What is heard must be what is heard. If it is not heard, what there is is what one has not heard. How can one say that what one has heard is what one has not heard? O world honored one! What one cannot hear is what one has not heard. If one has heard it, there is no more of hearing no longer any yet. To be heard. Why not? Because one has already heard it. How can one say that what one has heard is what one has not heard? For example, this is similar to the case where when a person who has gone has come, he is not gone, if he has gone, he has not come. If one is born, there is no being born, if not born, there is no being born. When something has been gained, there is no longer any gaining of that. If it is not gained, there is no gaining. If not heard, there is no more of hearing, if not heard, there is no hearing any more. The case is like this. O world honored one. A person might say that he has heard what he has not heard. As all beings have not yet gained enlightenment, this can well be had can well happen. When nirvana has not yet been gained, one may well gain it. When the Buddha nature has not yet been seen, one might well see it. How can one say that the Bodhisattva of the stage of the ten Bhuma sees the Buddha nature, but is not yet quite clear in his seeing of it? O world honored one! One may well say that non hearing is hearing. O Tathagata! From whom did you once hear in the past? If it is said that you did hear, how could you say in the Agamas that you had no teacher? If having not heard is not heard, and if the Tathagata did attain unsurpassed enlightenment, beings not having heard must mean the attaining of unsurpassed enlightenment. O Tathagata! If one can see the Buddha nature even without having heard this great Nirvana Sutra, all beings must also be able to see it, even though they have not heard it. O world honored one! Color is both visible and not visible. The same with sound. It is either audible or non-audible. This great Nirvana is neither color nor sound. How can one say that one can well see or hear it? O world honored one! If the past is what is already gone, it is not audible. As the future has not yet arrived, one cannot hear it. One can say that one hears now, but one cannot say that one has heard. When heard, the voice dies out and one cannot possess it any longer. This great nirvana is not of past, future, or present. If not of the three times, there can be no explaining. If inexpressible, there can be no hearing. How can we say that the Bodhisattva practices the teaching of this great Nirvana Sutra and say that he hears what he has not heard? Then the Buddha, praising Bodhisattva all shining highly virtuous king, said, Well said, well said. You now know well that all things are like phantoms, flames, a Gandhar Van Castle, a picture on the surface of water, and also like foam and plant in trees, which are empty and contain nothing therein. All have no life, no self, no suffering, and no bliss. 
This is similar to the case of the Bodhisattva of the stage of the Ten Bhumis, who knows and sees things. Then, of a sudden, there flashed out over the congregation a great light. It was not blue, and yet it was blue, not yellow, and yet it was yellow, not red, and yet it was red, not white, and yet it was white, not a color, and yet there was color there, not bright, and yet it was bright, not visible, and yet it was visible. Then, the great congregation, on encountering this light, felt their bodies and minds all joy and happiness. This was as with a bhiksa who now dwells in the Lion King Dhyana. Then Bodhisattva Manjushri said to the Buddha, O world-honored one, who emits this light now? Then the Tathagata was silent and said nothing. Bodhisattva Kajyapa also asked of Manjushri, Why does this light shine upon us? Manjushri was silent and did not reply. Then Bodhisattva Boundless Body also asked Bodhisattva Kajyapa, Whose is this light? Bodhisattva Kajyapa was silent and said nothing. Bodhisattva Pure Abode Prince asked Bodhisattva Boundless Body, Why does this great light appear to all this great congregation? Bodhisattva Boundless Body was silent and said nothing. So did it go with the Bodhisattvas. Though asked, there was none there who made reply. Then the World Honored One asked Manjushri, Why is there this light over this great mass of people? Manjushri said, O World Honored One, We call this light wisdom. Wisdom is what eternally is. The Dharma eternal has no causal relations. Why do you, the Buddha, ask me about this light? This light is the Tathagata. The Tathagata is eternal. The Dharma eternal is not grounded on causal relations. How does it come, then, that the Tathagata asks me for the reason? This light is great loving-kindness and great compassion. Great loving-kindness and great compassion are eternal. The Dharma eternal is not grounded on causal relations. Why does the Tathagata ask me about causal relations? This light is the meditation on the Buddha. The meditation on the Buddha is the Dharma eternal. The Dharma eternal is not erected upon the path of causal relations. Why should the Tathagata ask me about causal relations? This light is the way that does not obtain with any Sravakas or Pratyekabuddhas. The way that does not obtain with Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas is eternal. The Dharma eternal is not built upon the path of causal relations. Why does the Tathagata ask me about causal relations? By doing away with ignorance, one gains the burning flame of unsurpassed enlightenment. The Buddha said, O Manjushri. Do not enter into the all-wonderful depths of the Paramartha Satya of all dharmas. Explain things by means of secular truth. Manjushri said, O world-honored one! To the east, beyond worlds as numerous as the sands of Ganges, is a world called Akala. The site where the Buddha of that country resides is extensive and all-equal and is as large as 12,000 yojanas lengthwise and crosswise. The ground is made of jewels and has no earth or stones. All is flat and soft, and there are no ditches or pits. All the trees are made of the four gems, namely, gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. Flowers and fruits are in abundance, and there is no time when these are not present. As people come into contact with the flowers and their fragrance, their body and mind experience peace and bliss, which can be likened to a bhiksa sitting in the third hyena. And there are three thousand great rivers that surround the land. The water is delicate and wonderful and is perfect in the eight tastes. The people who bathe in it experience joy and bliss comparable to the state of a bhiksu in the second hyena. The rivers contain various flowers, such as the Utpal, Padma, Kumuda, Pandarika, the fragrant, the greatly fragrant, the wonderfully fragrant, the nitya, and the bloom that unhinderedly protects all beings. Also, on both banks are numerous flowers, such as the Atimuttaka, Kampaka, Pataliputra, Varsika, Malika, Mahamalika, Simalika, Sumna, Yathaka, Dhanaka, Nitya, and the bloom that unhinderedly protects all beings. The riverbed is of golden sand, 
and there are flights of stairs on the four sides, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal of mixed colors. Numerous birds fly over these. Also, there live many tigers, wolves, lions, and all kinds of evil birds and beasts there, all of whom, however, regard one another with the mind of a baby. There is in that land no one who carries out the grave offenses, nor are there those who slander Dharma, nor are there any Akantikas, nor those who have committed the five deadly sins. The land is good and fit, so that there is no cold or heat, and no sufferings from famine or thirst, no greed, anger, indolence, or jealousy reign there, there is no talk of sun and moon, no day and night, and there are no seasons, all obtains as in Treostrimsa heaven. The people of that land shine and have no arrogance in their mind. All are bodhisattvamahasattvas, all possess divine powers and great virtues, and their minds look up to wonderful dharma. They ride in the Mahayana. Love the Mahayana, die for, and protect, the Mahayana. They are accomplished in great wisdom, are perfect in the Mahayana, and always pity all beings. The Buddha of that land is Tathagata full moonlight, who is an alms deserving, all enlightened one, an all accomplished one, a well gone, an all knower, an unsurpassed one, best trainer, and teacher of gods and humans, a Buddha world honored one. He delivers sermons where he resides. And there is not a single land that cannot indeed hear them. He delivers a sermon on the great Nirvana Sutra to Bodhisattva Vedurya Prabha. O oh good man! If a Bodhisattva Mahasattva thoroughly practices the way of the Great Nirvana Sutra, those who cannot actually hear can also hear. This Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Vedurya Prabha questions Buddha full moonlight as Bodhisattva all shining highly virtuous king questions me. All is the same, and there is nothing different. Buddha full moonlight said to Bodhisattva Vedurya Prabha, O oh good man! Far out to the west, beyond as many lands as sands of Ganges. There is a land called Saha. In that, there abound mountains, hills, mounds, sand, gravel, thorns, and poisonous thorns. There are always the sufferings of hunger, thirst, cold, and heat there. The people of that land do not respect Sramanas, Brahmins, parents, teachers, or elders. They greedily cling to unlawful acts, practice wrong actions, and do not believe in wonderful dharma. Their life is short. Those who cunningly cheat others are cured punished by the king. The king possesses territories, but is not satisfied. He covets what others possess. He calls forth wars and fights, and many meet with untimely deaths. As the king acts thus, the four guardians of the earth and good devas cannot have an easy mind. So calamities and famines come about, and the five cereals do not grow well. People suffer from illnesses and suffering goes on unendingly. There lives a Buddha there called Tathagata Shakyamuni, an alms deserving, an all enlightened one, an all accomplished one, a well gone, an all knower, an unsurpassed one, best trainer, teacher of gods and humans, and a Buddha world honored one. All compassionate and kind-hearted towards all beings, he is delivering sermons on the great Nirvana Sutra to all beings, at Kusinagara, between the Sal trees. There is a Bodhisattva there called All Shining Highly Virtuous King. Already he asks about this and nothing differs here from what you ask. The Buddha is now answering. Make haste and go there. You will hear things yourself. O world-honored one! That Bodhisattva Vedurya Prabha, on hearing this, is coming with 84,000 Bodhisattva Mahasattvas. Hence this premonition. Because of this, we have this light. That is why. And yet it is not why. Then Bodhisattva Vedurya Prabha arrived, accompanied by 84,000 Bodhisattvas and bearing, along with various banners and parasols, incense, flowers, garlands, and various kinds of music, double that which had gone before. All came to Kusinagara, between the Sal trees. Offering what they had brought to the Buddha, they touched his feet with their heads, folded their hands together, paid homage, and thrice walked around the Buddha. 
Having paid homage, they sat down to one side. Then the world honored one asked that Bodhisattva, O oh good man, have you arrived or not? Bodhisattva Vaidurya Prabha said, O oh world honored one, arrived is not come, and not arrived is also not come. As I think of this, there is no coming at all. O oh world honored one, even if all things were eternal, it would also be not come, even if it is not eternal, there is no coming. If one thinks that man has a nature, there is coming and no coming. I now do not see any eternally fixed nature in beings. How can I say to have come or not to have come? With an arrogant person, there can be going and coming, with one without arrogance, there can be no coming and going. With one who is leaving, there can be talk of going and coming, with one without the leaving mind, there is no talk of going and coming. If one thinks that the Tathagata ultimately enters Nirvana now, there is going and coming, if one does not think that the Tathagata ultimately enters Nirvana, there can be no going and coming. If one does not hear of the Buddha nature, there can be going and coming, with one who hears of the Buddha nature, there can be no going and coming. With one who thinks that there is Nirvana with the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas, there is going and coming, with one who does not see any entering into Nirvana with the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas, there can be no going and coming. If one sees the eternal, bliss, the self, and the pure with the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas, there is going and coming, if not, there is no going and coming. If one views the Tathagata as not the eternal, bliss, the self, and the pure, there is going and coming, if one sees the eternal, bliss, self, and the pure with the Tathagata, there cannot be any going and coming. O world honored one! Leave this matter as it is for the present. I desire to ask more. Please condescend to give ear to me. The Buddha said, O good man! Ask as you wish to ask. It is now time. I shall now make things clear and explain them to you. Why? Because it is hard to encounter a Buddha, as it is difficult to come across the blooming of the Udambara. It is the same with Dharma. It is difficult to hear it. Of the types of Sutra, the hardest to hear is the Vapilya. For this reason, listen with undivided attention. Then Bodhisattva Mahasattva Vaiduriya Prabha obtained permission and also admonition. And he said to the Buddha, O world honored one, how can a Bodhisattva Mahasattva practice the great Nirvana Sutra? I wish to hear what I have not heard before. Then the Tathagata praised him, saying, Well said, well said, O good man. You now desire to cross the sea of the great Nirvana of Mahayana. And you rightly encounter my sermon. I shall now become a great doctor and thoroughly extract the poisonous arrows of diverse doubt. You are not yet clear as to the Buddha nature. I possess the torch of wisdom and shall well enlighten you. You now desire to cross the great river of birth and death. I shall now become a mariner for you. You see in me the parent, and I see in you the small child. Your mind is now dying for the treasures of wonderful Dharma. I have much and can stand giving. Listen clearly to me, listen clearly to me. Bethink yourself well. I shall. Now make things clear and explain them to you. Oh good man. It is now time for you to hear Dharma. Having heard it, believe it, and gain a respectful mind. Listen with all your mind, venerate what you have heard. Do not seek to pick out something wrong in wonderful Dharma. Think not of greed, anger, and ignorance. Think not of good and bad or of the caste of the priest. Having heard Dharma, be not arrogant. Do not do things for honor, fame, or profit. Make effort to save the world, and for the interest of sweet Dharma. Also, do not be worried in mind. Hear Dharma, save yourself, and then save others. First, understand yourself and let others understand. First, ease yourself, and then ease others. First, gain nirvana yourself, and then let others gain it. 
see with an equal mind Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. See birth and death as great suffering. See in great nirvana the eternal, bliss, the self, and the pure. First act for others, and then for your own self. Act for Mahayana and not for the two vehicles. Do not cling to anything. Do not cling to the characteristics of anything. Do not be greedy towards anything. Always try to understand and see Dharma. O oh good man! If you give ear to Dharma with such an attitude, this is how one hears what one has not heard before. O oh good man! There is a hearing, when one has not heard, there is a non-hearing when one has heard, there is a hearing when one has heard. O oh good man! There is a birth, without being born, there is no being born, without being born, there is no being born, having been born, there is a being born, having been born. Similarly, there is an arriving, not having arrived, there is no arriving, not having arrived, there is no arriving, having arrived, there is an arriving, having arrived. O world-honored one! What is being born, not having been born? O good man! Abiding peacefully in secular truth, one first comes out of the womb. This is being born, having not yet been born. What is not being born, not having been born? O good man! This great nirvana has no aspect of being born. This is not being born, having not been born. What is not being born, having been born? O good man! Death comes in secular truth. This is not being born, having once been born. What is being born, having been born? O oh good man! All common mortals are those who are born by having been born. Why? Because there is no disruption in being born and being born, and because all leakings defilements follow moment upon moment. This is being born, having been born. The Bodhisattva of the Four Abodes Bhumis is no being born, having been born. Why? Because he is unmolested in being born. This is a non-being born, having been born. O oh good man! This is what obtains within the Buddhist teaching. What are, being born, having not yet been born, not yet being born, having not yet been born, not being born, having been born, and being born, having been born, as said in other teachings. O oh good man! Let us take the case of a seed. When it is not yet born, the great elements can join, man acts, and it first burgeons out into a bud. This is being born, having not yet been born. What is not being born, having not yet been born? For example, the case of a dead seed and its not meeting with the necessary conditions is that of not born, having not been born. What is not born, having been born? This is as when the seed has shot forth its bud, but there is no growth. This is a case of not born, having been born. What is being born, having been born? This is as with the growing of the bud. If what is born does not grow, there is no increase. All such aspects of the leakable i.e. the defiled are cases of being born, having been born, as stated in the categories of other teachings. Bodhisattva Mahasattva Vaidurya Prabha said to the Buddha, O world-honored one, if it is the case that any being is born in what is leakable, is it eternal or non-eternal? If what is born is eternal, then there cannot be any being born in what is leakable. If being born is non-eternal, what is leakable must be the eternal. O world-honored one, if what is born can well be born by itself, there cannot be any nature of its own. If it can well call forth another life, why can it not call forth the unleakable? i.e. that which is undefiled? O world-honored one! If there is life when not yet born, how can we speak of being born? When there is no life when not yet born, why do we not call space life? The Buddha said, Well said, well said, O good man! Born, not having been born is inexpressible, born, having been born is inexpressible, not.